Preview. Go live. I think I need to press this button. Let's just try it. Go in live. Right. Live. Brilliant. I think we're on. Yes, it's up. Up and running. Sorry. Just a bit different on the Mac. Again. Sound okay for everybody? Video okay for everybody? Just give me a thumbs up if you can. <clears throat> Live okay, right, thanks Steve, brilliant. Right guys, so, good morning, welcome to this stream. Hopefully we won't have any um, technical problems this morning. I have rigged the Mac up. Hello mate, you have an echo. Right, okay, let's just have a look at that then, one second. I think that might be because I've got two of these running. Let's just turn that one down. I thought that. Are we good now? No echo, guys? All good. All good. Brilliant. Okay. So, let's get into it, right? Has the echo disappeared for you now? I have to. I have turned it down, um, the, the other microphone that's on the Mac. Just let me know. Let me just see if I might have to turn this down as well. Has the echo gone now? Is there an echo now? It's good now. Not bad. Better. Perfect. Okay, brilliant. So, I had the volume up on my actual MacBook Pro, and I think that was interfering with the volume on my, on my Yeti microphone. So, brilliant. Perfect. Fabulous. So, let's get into it. Yesterday, right? What a tough day it was yesterday. Let me just get into the position that I talk. Um, let's just get my mouse across. So, I took one position and tra I traded it. Traded it badly, really, but I ended up with a small profit on it. Where is it now? Positions, history. Right, so as you can see, I ended up coming out yesterday with £18.61 profit, which is absolutely pathetic, really. I should I should have done a lot better than that. Um, <clears throat> the 18.61, how did I get 18.61? So let me talk you through what I was seeing and how it went through, because um, what happened was... The, the circumstances change now obviously me trading my strategy and I've told you before like um, I will try and always hold a position and stuff like you know I will always try and let a position run but yesterday let me talk you through what happened with the DAX because I know there's no trade here at all because I need a pullback first of all right so I'm sat here yesterday morning with you guys on the stream watching this thing go down and I'm thinking to myself like I should have had an entry here I should have I should have got short like there's got there must have been an entry in here for me but the big balance was was obviously putting me off it was off putting because I'm thinking to myself like I know the probability of me making money on a big balance day is very slim but we do have context to that balance right there's obviously all the risk off stuffs coming in the Evergrande stuff but I don't really take much uh, pay much attention to that but just the context is there so I'm thinking to myself like I've done myself I've I've done my arse here like this thing's going to go I couldn't get an entry and I couldn't get an entry, but I looked into what I was saying to you as I wanted to see a pullback into the US session. And then obviously the US session, I was looking for it to roll over again. Now I did get short in here, right in this area. I got short in here. And what happened was, what made me change my mind and obviously, um, you know, sort of not do as well as I should have with, with the position is, First of all, I got squeezed straight away. So I, I got short in this area and then I got squeezed straight away, right? And I'm very, my stop was just above this high here. And if I, I'm expecting this to roll over here. My stop was in the perfect position, so that was good. I'd risk the right amount, but it just wasn't going at all. It was like, it was really frustrating. Now I spent all this time from every, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, like 25 odd candles underwater, right? It was stressful. Like I was thinking, just stop me out, just get it over and done with. But because I put my stop in the technically correct place, just above this high, it sort of ended up going my way and we did get the push down that I was expecting. But when you look at the Dow and the S&P, and the this is what put me off and this is what upset me. Like yesterday, I'm sat here and I'm thinking, right, I'm in this position now, I'm gonna let it run. I'm gonna let it run in here. But when I flicked over to the US 500 and the, the, the actual Wall Street chart, if you look at them, 
This is the IB on the DAO, and I always pay massive attention to the IB on the DAO and what the DAO is doing for the DAX, because obviously the DAX sort of follows um, what the DAO does, I think. It's very similar volatility-wise. It's very similar how it sort of rotates and the uh, swings it makes. So it doesn't really trade like the S&P 500. Obviously, the S&P 500 is the benchmark that they all follow, but I find the DAO to be very similar to the DAX, just by how it moves, right? So look at this. This is the IB on the DAO here. Now, I'm thinking to myself, right, so at this point here, the Dow and the Spooza, if you go onto the five minute on Spooza, have all made new lows, yeah? And I'm getting squeezed in my DAX short in here. And the DAX never made new lows yesterday. It never made new lows, like this low here held. So that's telling me, relatively, I'm in this position here and I'm thinking, right, I'm gonna hold it. I've gone back it through to a break even. I'm starting to see some blue numbers. Now on this rotation here back up, I think I scalped out of the position here because I'm thinking to myself, right, the DAX hasn't made new lows. It's been very hesitant to go down in this afternoon session all day. It felt like somebody was holding the market up in this area here. And as it as it moved down here, I just thought, right, I'm gonna I'm not I'm not spending all day stressed out staring at this market. So on my on my live account, my proper account, I scalped out of it, and on this account I scalped out of it. Now, I wouldn't normally do that, but the things that were telling me to do it were obviously the American markets. Now, relatively, the DAX was holding up. So I got short a market, which wasn't obviously showing the weakness that the American markets were. And I expected at this point here, this point here to, free, to rotate straight back up and go and take these highs here. It didn't, it rotated back down. I got stopped out for break even in this area here on the remainder of my position. But in hindsight, it wasn't a bad position because if you look at the close, now I always say I hold until the close, I would have ended up underwater on that trade. So by using the relative strength of the DAX against the Dow and the S&P, I managed to sort of not come out of the position, you know, done any well or actually made any money, but I sort of saved myself from, um, you know, not taking anything. And I just felt like we were on the wrong side. Like I was trying to get short in here and I just it just felt like it was holding up all afternoon. So you've got to take that information. This is how I look at it. You've, you've got to be prepared like, you know, if a pa if, if a, a, pa a captain in a plane always makes the, the end decision, doesn't he? Like the decision sticks with you. Like sometimes, you know, if you can see certain circumstances setting up that are making you feel like you might be the, uh, let's say like the, the joker at the table or whatever. And you know, like, I thought to myself, the DAX should have been going. It really wasn't. And I'd, along with that big IB, along with us not making new lows, I just had to bail on that short. So, But it was the most stressful day ever. Like at The FOMO that I had as this thing was pushing down here. And then when it just went here, I was just thinking to myself, like, for fuck's sake, you know, I can't steam in here and get short, you know, because I'd potentially be selling a low. I've got to wait for a pullback. Now, we got the pullback, and then we, we just messed around and didn't even end up going and buy close. We pushed straight back up into this block again. So... It was the toughest day ever, it really was. And um, yeah, so I was just disappointed. But same as say, it was a profitable a profitable day. I didn't lose any money, um, but I could have traded it so much better by just getting short in here, in this area here, and just holding. Like I made it hard work for myself by, by, by sort of not getting in on one of these sort of pullbacks and then obviously um, expecting it to go down. The context was there. And I didn't appreciate that context, and maybe I should have. So that's something to learn for me for next time. Obviously, the big balances, you know, when they have context, you've still got to, you've still got to trade the market. You know, the potential is that you could have a huge ATR day. The context is there, you know. But I just didn't like this action, this action here, this sort of. It felt like it was going down. And it was just getting pushed up, and then it was going down, and then the rotations were awful. Like I would have much preferred it to just go straight line and then a tight consolidation. But like I said, the DAX is um, never, it never trades how you want it to. It will always try and slip you or, or whatever. And I think I felt that yesterday. And like in here, I'm so stressed out. I'm thinking to myself, you know, what the hell are you doing? You should have taken the trade. I just, just, I just didn't. And then obviously I spent all, nearly all afternoon, you know, watching this thing. And I was so close to getting stopped out here. It was unbelievable. I think it was like four or five ticks away from his stop. And um, at this point, obviously, your nerves are gone, you're, an you're anxious, you feel anxious, you're a bit stressed, obviously, you know, and I know it's only a losing trade, but obviously, I do have a little bit more pressure on me, with me, with it being live and stuff, so, 
and it wouldn't have mattered. I would have just preferred it to have just stopped me out. I think that would have been great. If this would have just gone up here and just stopped me out, it would have been brilliant. You know, but then obviously, because it's just so close to your stop and it's like right there to stopping you out, you're like, it's just, you cut. at that point, I'm watching, I'm sitting watching it all and I'm stressed and I'm thinking to myself, I just wished it had just fucking stopped me out. But it didn't. And then obviously, then it gives you, opens up another box and then you're thinking, like I said, this low's holding. Like, you know, am I am I just doing the wrong thing? I should have got out. So it was a tough day. It really was. So yeah, let, tell me about what you guys have been up to. That's that was my day yesterday. It was rubbish. Like you know, the amount of stress and the anxiety and the the um, you know the feeling of just like you know not not doing anything good. And then with the amount of money that I ended up making, it, it's just like it was ridiculous. It really was. <laughs> what time do you use for I beyond Dow? First fifteen minutes, SB. So um, I use the first four candles though. So. Um, 2.30 to 2.45, but I include the 2.45 candle and the 2.30 candle. Called long on Aussie US dollar pullback. Are you getting long then, Aiden? Now, tell me what you're doing. Give me an entry and a stop. Dan's in long. Where are you in long from, Dan? Where did you get long? Does that mean you're long on DAX? Where's your stop? Where's your entry? Give it to me. Let's have a look. I need a pullback first. I do, but it's turnaround Tuesday. The old market technical term. So maybe we could get a decent move up. Maybe everybody sold the low yesterday and got out thinking the bull market's over because they've been looking at Northman's charts. And maybe we just push straight back up and just do a massive, massive U-turn today. Let's have a look. So, where are you long, Dan? Tell me. I'm interested on the stacks. Whereabouts are you in from? Where's your stop? Don't be afraid. We're all honest here. <laughs> this is the honest room. 270. Lock, right, Dax Long, 270 futures. Where's your stop then? Right, so you're long in here, are you? Yeah, I can see that. Nice little breakout trade. Are you on a, are you, what time frame are you using for that, Dan? Followed your IB strategy, right? So there you go, pal. But um, that that I wouldn't I wouldn't be long here. That's not really part of my strategy. I would need a pullback first. But I, I can see what you're doing. You're trading the actual break, the breakout, are you? But that pullback there wouldn't have been enough for me. This one, I would have liked it to just fold back in a little bit like that, and and then rotate back up, and I would have taken that leg out. Because from, from, from what I've seen, these legs, these first drives out like that, a lot of the time they sort of consolidate or they uh, pull back and then you get your entry. And I, I used to find when I was trying to chase it, chase it out, the first the first leg, I'd often not lose money, but I would often get stopped for break even. And I'd basically be making me broker rich a lot of the time. Now, I did scale out, you know, and take profits as it was pushing up. But um, I did find a lot of the time they, they did sort of roll back down for me and stop me out for break even. How do you deal with being a parent and trading? I struggle sometimes having the kids at home and being pulled away from the screen when they're trading. Them. Yeah, Matty, I, that is exactly, I'm in that position, mate. So like, this is all going on yesterday afternoon, right? And this is my little office area upstairs and my little lad's like, dad, come and play football outside. Like, it was a lovely afternoon. He'd, he'd obviously wanted to see me all day, come in. And I, I, I did, I couldn't, I couldn't get out there, you know, like, I couldn't go and play football with him. That does suck, but obviously, you know, your job is to trade the markets, isn't it? And if you were at work doing anything else, um, you still wouldn't be able to play football with your kids, would you? But obviously, especially when you're at home, I find it a lot more difficult. I think if I was an off had an office somewhere else out of the way, then you'd just be coming home like a normal job, wouldn't you? But when you're at home, it's like he thinks that I can just go and play football with him while I've got risk on or whatever, and it's tough to say no. <laughs> Once I stop, so he can fade us. Aiden, no, mate. Honestly, you'd be fading me, mate. <laughs> I can't. I haven't got enough mental capacity to start doing stuff like that. This Dax takes all of mine. Five minute time frame, right? Okay, pal. Two R so far, Dan. Good lad. <clears throat> 
just looking at the stream, making sure everything's okay. I, I haven't had anything yet that's sort of, um, it says excellent connection. Two hours stop to break even. Good lad. Awesome. It really is motoring, isn't it? Hopefully we'll get a pullback though. Hopefully. We'll get a trade on long, definitely. Everything okay with the stream, guys? Steve Rathbone, by the way, yeah, sorry about yesterday, bud. I um I, I had I had so much going on yesterday and obviously um it was just so tough because obviously I was staring at the stack to most of the morning thinking I was trying to get a short on and then in the afternoon session obviously I was in short so my whole day was taken up yesterday because it was such a it, it was it was just such a tricky market that yesterday's trade was um really tough now I you know like when I was a long time ago I would have been in and out of that market so many times and pr probably would have made money probably would maybe would have lost but I would have been um I would have made my broker rich yesterday, definitely. So they, they are the good points that I say. Obviously, as you mature, you you know you know you know when you, when you've got to get in. Like yesterday afternoon, I had to take an entry. That setup, um, sure, we could have we could have expanded lower, but then as you get in the real time data and the market's telling you relatively the DAX is stronger, you then I've obviously got to reassess and um, get out if you if you can. Stream quality today is up, brilliant. MacBook Pro, dude. Yeah, I've got a new MacBook um, in January last year. It's a new M1 M1 version, so it's pretty good. I think I just don't I don't really use it very often, apart from when I'm entering trades downstairs in the kitchen or whatever. What smaller time frame would you say to use waiting for a breakout? So let's get on. This is crack cocaine here, but let's get on to the one minute time frame, and I will show you how I would have traded this balance break. So on the one minute time frame. I always use the one minute balance, so you're not um, you're not looking at the five minute balance on the one minute time frame. You're only looking at the one minute balance, right? And I'd always include the 8 a.m. candle. So let's get that off there. So this is the uh, one minute time frame, not the five minute. This isn't part of my trading strategy at all. So don't sort of like think that I'm I'm, I'm sort of doing this or anything like that. But for me, I I would be I'd be long there. Like that's where I belong. You can clearly see that we've rotated down. The market's gone and tested the top of balance. We've taken out this pin bar here. And then obviously you'd be thinking to yourself here on this pullback, this this three candle pullback here. One, two, three. Right, okay. Now, if the market's going to accept balance there, I would expect us to come down further into balance. Yeah, but we haven't. And straight away, this aggressive green candle here for me that takes the roof off the balance again, I would I would be long here and I would have my stop beneath this low here and I would just hold. Now, that, that entry there, you could say you could take profits at 2R, 3R, you could hold it all day. Now, um, you know, you'd have to do your own stats on that um, and see if it makes sense to you. But um, there's potentially an entry there that definitely for me, the second entry would be around here at this point. If you mark that high off there, and you're looking at an entry around this point here on this on this doji candle. Now, do you take the doji candle itself or do you wait to see a green candle and then put your stop beneath this low here? Or do you take the doji candle? Where do you put your stop though then? Very tricky. So your stop's still going to have to go down here. So as long as the market's going up and the risk rewards are acceptable, you can get a decent stop on. Anything like this here, you know, let me just draw it in for you, would be an acceptable, would be an acceptable trade for me. And I used to trade on the smaller time frames. So as you can see, up out of balance, the, the balance rejection fails. It looks like these guys are going to get stopped out here at this point when we break above it. And um, my stop would be below the low. Or if you didn't want to take that entry, you wait for extra confirmation. Take Wait for this high to get taken out. We go through the high, we pull back. Right, so you can see that this the top of this um, you know, old resistance becomes new support. You get your doji or you wait for your first sort of aggressive green candle away from it and then your stop goes beneath that low and you can get a decent risk reward on. So does that does that explain to everybody how I would how how I would um how I would how I would have traded it on the smaller time frames this morning? Now that's a perfect day because obviously it's going up, isn't it? And obviously, you know, you're trading the break of balance, so it all looks like relatively very easy. The key is in the days where it doesn't look like that, obviously, um, you know, because that that happens more than obviously just getting a clean breakout. So this, you know, you know, like this entry here or this entry here, 
sometimes they're not as clean as that. This is a very clean day, day's price action on the dark. So you won't find, I don't think that it would look like that every day, just to obviously uh, point that out. But that's how I would have traded it on the five minute anyway. Was you similar to me there, Dan? Why is it called balance? It's the initial balance, and it's 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 um it's what people used to say. Hey, oh, what's going on here? Siri's getting involved. Let me just go back and get her off. Be quiet, please. Thank you. It's the seven a.m. to eight a.m. Um, open. So Frankfurt opens at seven a.m. and London opens at eight a.m. So the theory goes that the Frankfurt sort of um, the trade through the Frankfurt session from seven to eight is the sort of um, guide to the day. Now, if that gets taken out, um, you know, by by a clean break higher or a clean break lower, it means that the people who are coming in onto the cash market aren't accepting them prices and want to move the market bias away from that balance zone. So that that's the theory behind it, Trader Z. I found an indicator that marks the IB for trading view. Yeah, there's lots of them. There is, but I just find draw it in. It keeps you sharp. You can have um, indicators for everything, can't you, really? But I, I just find manually drawing it in. I put my order just above the 825 wick after it dipped back into balance and took off again. Let's have a look. I think that's the candle. Is it? No. 825, done. Where's that gone? 825. Right, I get you. Yeah. So that's the 825 candle after it dipped back into balance and took off again. Yeah, you see, that's that's a great entry. Well done. See, that wouldn't be part of my system though, Dan, but if that's if that's what you're seeing, brilliant. So that's what I'm saying about don't letting other people's analysis corrupt your own mind because everybody sees what they want to see. Now, if you just take my strategy and use it yourself, you might just think, I can't see it. You know, I just can't make it work. But that just might be because your brain's just not able to sort of you know, decode my strategy very well, but you might see something else that works for you. So take it, take what you can and throw the rest away. I always say that about everything. I have an algo that, mechanical trading systems. This is the guy that got in touch with me yesterday on Twitter. I, look, I like it, mechanical trading systems. The problem I've got is I don't know if I wanna, I wanna tell everybody like, you know, my strategy and obviously, and I don't know what agreements that you've got in place, but if my strategy is making money, and I show it you, <laughs> then for me, I'd be a little bit worried that you might copy it and you know, before you know it, somebody could be selling it and um, it might not work after that. So that's the that's the problem that I've got with um, you know, sharing any sort of coding or strategy with anybody. But I don't know mechanical trading systems. He seems like a good guy though, and he's, he seems very good at what he does. So I assume that if he's got loads of these strategies that are sort of making a certain percentage a month, then why would mine be the, you know, the one that he would do that to? So have a think about it, but follow him on Twitter because he's, he's got some uh, good stuff on pro real time and he seems to be very good at what he does. So if anybody wants to get into any sort of coding stuff, um, contact him. He seems a good guy. Really nice analysis, mate. Nice, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Cheers, buddy. Hope you're good. Yeah, it does make backtesting easier change, it does. Yeah, I agree with that, buddy. It definitely does. I just noticed something similar yesterday, so I thought it would give it a go. Dan steaming in. Love it. <laughs> One day's worth of data and he's, he's in. He's smashing it and he's, he's making money. So, well done, mate. Good lad. I'm pleased for you. But what, what I will say, Dan, is backtest it. Have a look at it. See if it see if it makes money. Just back test a month's worth of data. Get a spreadsheet up. Go through the last month of the, that exact entry criteria which you've showed me, where you pointed out to us all this morning, and, and just have a look. But when you're back testing, make sure you put like one R, two R, three R, four R, end of day, five R, and then obviously for every entry that it makes, work out the maximum uh, profit that each position could have made you, and where the optimal point of uh, profit taking was for that sort of systematic entry, if you understand that. So I found that mine were uh, sort of, 
a, a percentage of some to the end of the day, some at three or four R, um, and I found that they that was the the maximum um, sort of profit take from my entry system. So that's that's what you should do with it, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. <clears throat> do you trade currency? Saw so pound US dollar on your charts yesterday. Yeah, I like the pound. the The IV does work, but it's only certain days that it I, I like to trade it on. They're not they don't happen very often. It's just basically an open drive straight out of it, and then a, and then a really sort of shallow pullback. I think I've tweeted um, the actual uh, you know like plan of that when it happens. It's on my tw Twitter somewhere. It's it's out of my day, so it's like a specific day type: open drive, consolidation, into the U.S. session. We just head lower and clip some stops, thinking that everybody's gonna you know get short, catching all the shorts out, and then we expand and go for another leg higher through into the U.S. session until close. Like I will trade that that specific day type on the pound. Now they're difficult to spot, but they all look very similar with a tight IB and a drive up. So I, if I see that, I will try and jump on it. I'm not fishing for your strategy, mate. No, I know, I know mechanical trading systems. I know you're not, buddy. And I'm not, um, I'm not trying to say that. I was just trying to have a little bit of banter with you. But um, yeah, that that's the that's the only thing that's worried me in the past, anyway. That of like sharing stuff, sharing you know strategies that have taken me a lot of hard work and a lot of pain to sort of you know see. So you have to be very sort of. Uh, you have to have trust in the person that you're using to code it with, don't you? Basically, and I'm not saying for any for any for any second that I don't have to, don't trust you. But obviously, uh, you know, I have. We have only just sort of spoken to each other and stuff. But I, I I will try and get a relationship going with you definitely, and I will point other people to have a look at you and see if they can um, get a relationship with you because it is his coding is fantastic. It really is. But thank you for getting in touch, mechanical. Thank you. <clears throat> Good to see someone trade in real time. Yeah, no setups for me this morning though, Mark. None. Nothing. It's going to be one of, them, one of them days where I'm buying the pullback again, obviously. But is it a pullback that you want to buy or will it be a reversal? <laughs> are we going to just obviously, is the pullback just going to keep going back down? Or are we actually just going to pull back and, and go for another leg higher? I don't know. <clears throat> it's a tough one, but it is turnaround Tuesday. Somebody sent me some um, paperwork yesterday about Turnaround Tuesday and how it does actually work. Theory is obviously everybody shits the pants over the weekends, comes in, Friday sells off, come in Monday thinking, oh my God, this this is the real deal, this sell off, this is the end of the bull market, this is, I need to sell everything, this is real. And then by Tuesday, everybody sold on Monday and by Tuesday nobody's got anything left to sell. So. The only thing the market can do is bounce and everybody that sold has to rebuy back in again and we just go and smash the highs and go straight back up. I don't know if that'll happen, I don't know. Who knows? But I think the stats would say that buying on turnaround Tuesday is a profitable strategy. And I think I read that it was a profitable strategy in the in the bear market as well. So even in the bear market in the in the, the last you know, when the Lehman happened and that, I think if you would have just brought on a Tuesday I don't know the criteria of it though, but I think it, buying on a Tuesday was green, even in a bear market. So you have to sort of think that that could possibly be important to, to, to today, especially with the amount of selling that we've seen over the Friday and Monday. I think we had um, proper fear yesterday morning on the DAX, I would say, definitely. Right, mechanical trading systems. Tuesday's the week prior to OPEX is the one to look at. See, this guy is good, guys. You could check. You should check him out. <clears throat> I can tell straight away that mechanical trading systems is uh, knows what he's talking about, and he does just by speaking to him a few times yesterday on Twitter. So, if you're struggling and you want to try and make an algo or something like that, have a look at his Twitter page. If he followed, I think he follows me. So, have a look at it because um, if you use Pro Real Time or anything like that, I think he knows what he's talking about. So, I don't know the cost or anything like that, and it's not an ad at all. <laughs> Please don't think that. It's definitely not. I'm not trying to shill anybody. <laughs> but he does seem like he's he's legit, so if it can help someone out, have a look. Steve, tried to buy the S&P dip yesterday. Had my stop at 43.07, got taken out and reversed straight up after three pips. Lower feels bad. Yeah, 
I uh, that that do, that does happen, dude. What were you looking at, Steve? Let's have a look because I was looking at the S and P five hundred yesterday, and that you might say that this trend line here was like retail retail garbage. Most people would, but I, I had my eye on it. I just thought we were smashing we were smashing down into it, and we've seen this bounce off this point, and I thought if we go through it again, we could we could bounce. Now on the smaller time frames, it did this, if you can see. This is hit. This is it here. So we sort of looked like we bounced off it, and then we 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 did sort of like a a smashing grab, and I call that like a liquidity grab, where the algos and everybody know that this, you know people are trying to buy this trend line, but they just go through it, stop everybody out, and then and then obviously it pushes straight back above it again with solid green, and then doesn't give anybody a chance to just get in unless you're willing to just take another stab at it here. Now I saw that happening yesterday, and I thought, oh god. You know, like these people here who've sold this thinking this is going to go. Look at that. One big smash candle straight up. And uh, it was tricky. As you can see, look at that. But this is this is, this is is the key, right? Steve, I, I, don't, I, mean, I don't know if this can help you, but this is what I'm thinking yesterday. As we hit 820, yeah, after the massive sell-off, You've got to be so careful at around that time. I think there's that guy on Twitter called Ramp Capital, and he it's 8:30 till nine where the market just literally ramps, and it's like everybody just sort of buys it at the same time. Now, if you're short and you start seeing like this V, you know, like these drives, especially into this sort of time at half past eight, um, you know, or if you or if you're trying to buy the market, you know, sometimes it's just better to wait till half past eight. Um, I don't know if that can help anybody out, but. I had a little strategy um, that I back tested, which was profitable, right? And it was a, uh, it was buying the market literally at half past eight. Once a Bollinger Band breakout had happened, so any time in between eight thirty and nine, if we hit the top of a Bollinger Band and closed through with a solid green closing candle um, on the smaller time frame, like on a one minute time frame, and literally just hold till close. Now that strategy made money. Have a look at that if anybody's interested. So you're basically just using time of day um, to give you a bias. Now the bias is that at half past eight to nine o'clock, especially if we've had a down day, and it does happen on up days as well, that all the big boys, I think I think they have to square up the positions or um, I don't know the actual plumbing of it, but if you look at if you look at an actual um, Wall Street or a Dow or an S and P five hundred chart, um, have a look at it. Just the last half an hour's price action. And see if you can try and come up with a mechanical strategy to get you in and out with acceptable risk. There's definitely something there. Definitely. So let's have a look. What is it? let's have a look. Tuesdays. What is his name? What is his Twitter name again, Oliver? Mechanical trading strategies, that's what it is. Tried to get a bullish swing failure pat pattern preempted on the low at four three five two. Okay, let's just have a look. Let's see where you. Were you in the S and P five hundred or or ES? Which one were you in the futures or the or the S and P five hundred? ES or which one was it, Steve? Let me know so I can have a look at it. <clears throat> it was tough yesterday, was. I'm not going to deny it. It really was. You had to have your wits about it yesterday. Even though it was a down day, it was it was tough to trade it, in my experience. It really was. So I can appreciate that uh, anybody sort of... Uh, I think most people would have thought we were reversing here. Most people would have. And then obviously we took another dive. And then... It goes down, stops everybody out, and then it ends up higher than where everybody was trying to buy it. So if you're buying here thinking, right, this is an entry, brilliant, you know, it goes in your favour and then it just literally takes you out. But you, you've got to be very, very, on days like yesterday when the volatility is high, you've got to be so flexible and so um, able to move in and out of a position with no bias at all. You really have, and a lot of people find that tough to do. They really do. It's difficult to give your brain um, like a, uh, 360 you know because you're you're expecting something and then it doesn't happen and then you know before you know it you stopped out but then it actually does happen and then you think to yourself like well I've got to I've got to go in again am I going to risk even more 
you know, would it be better sitting out? It's, it's so tough, you know, real when it's live money. And these are the things that people just don't appreciate. So I, I feel you, I feel your pain, Steve, I really do. Yes, right, so you were uh, on the futures. Okay, thanks. A friend of mine is currently making his own algo for DAX, so I'll mention it to him. What's the algo, um, Oliver? What are the parameters of it? You don't have to give me the actual, you know, buy here, sell here, but what are you looking at? You're looking at IB or are you looking at something else? What time frames are you looking at? <clears throat> I remember you brought the dip last FOMC event. You're going to be sniffing again tomorrow night. Potentially, Dan. Potentially. Yeah. I, I like trading the uh, the data candles, especially the FOMC one. I, do, I don't do too bad with it. My hit rate's not, not too bad, but I, w I will be trading it on the lower time frame, so it won't be part of the strategy or with this account, but it will be on my live account. Yeah. Just like to just see what happens, and you can sort of get a feel for what's happening. And the, I find a lot of the time the first reaction is wrong. Um, so if you can get in with, with um, don't have to risk a lot. And potentially if you get the reversal of the reversal, you can do all right. Um, so yeah, I, I don't I, I do not do too bad on the, on, that, on them uh, big data releases. Same as say, I say it all the time. Data candles normally reverse, they, they normally do. The probability is that, um, you know, a lot of the time it's a, a false reaction. As you saw on the pound in the last one, when the pound bounced up and then it absolutely collapsed, literally the same afternoon. Massive head fake on, on, on cable. I think it was like a week ago, a week and a half ago. Morning, Mark. Sent you a DM in Twitter. Mark Wogan, how are you doing, pal? Let's have a look. Sorry, mate. Let's have a quick look, see what Mark's got to say. <clears throat> oh, got some bloody uh, corona going on. Ah, uh, right, yeah. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen that guy. But so yeah, so for me, Mark, right, with with anything like that, I appreciate that you know, like you, you might be getting an edge out of it. But for me, unless somebody's giving you an entry and an exit. I, I I can't I can't push anybody into um, going the, into any sort of trading room where somebody isn't like I don't know if this guy is or not but until I would know that he was I wouldn't want to sort of comment on pushing people into into like sort of saying anybody was doing well or doing right because how I see it is like anybody can make market calls like my nan makes four calls a morning to a bingo mate trying to get them to bingo does she earn any money from it no she doesn't like calls don't make you money execution entries exits that for me is um everything and i will follow somebody's calls if i've seen them for two three four months five months six months give me entry and exits that make them profitable now i that's how i look at it for everything so unless somebody's giving you an entry and exit, you can't even tell if they can trade. It's all hindsight stuff for me. Like most people can plan a DAX chart out. Like this morning, what have I said to you guys, right? I've said, well, so we've come into the DAX today. So I, I, I think that we're going to have a leg out and we're going to get a pullback. Well, most days we have a leg out and a pullback. But it doesn't mean that I've made any money on this short here. Because, you know, I, I didn't know when the market was going to go down, but it has done. It's gone up and it's gone down. So I look like a ledge donor. I've called it right. Brilliant. But for me, an entry and exit is everything. Now, if somebody's willing to tweet me entry and exits for three months or a month or six months, I will sing their praises till the end of time. And I will say, right, this guy deserves, if it's 50 quid a month, he deserves 200 a month, right? He deserves... A thousand a month because he's legit. He provides me with the real entries and exits, and I can see him making money. I can see live what he's doing. Um, you know how does he handle his trade? So, you know if it's live, you can see how somebody's handling the trade. Like yesterday, right? With my account, let's just go look at history. I handled that trade so shit it was unbelievable. Now, if you showed somebody that yesterday, they'd be saying, "Oh, you know, that's poor." But you would never see that unless I'd called it live. And then I've also shown you the actual history of entries and exits of it to show you that. And uh, that's the truth. That's the honest truth. So that's terrible. 
but unless you unless somebody's willing to open book with you call trades live entries exits but then also show you the result of that trade how they've managed it you know the things that they were seeing that made them manage it like that I, I, it's so tough for me to sort of you know like call anybody out into being like a, a ledge I, like I just can't I just fail to do it like for me because I think that that's what I would have wanted that's what I want, would have wanted somebody to show me um, how to do it and to be trading it with live money not some demo account on MT4 which everybody seems to do like the ICT guy and that they're all on demo like it, you don't feel no pressure on demo yesterday when I'm sat here balls deep short trying to get you know four ticks away from getting stopped out that person on demo is feeling absolutely nothing nothing no stress no anxiety no biting fingernails not red in the cheeks no heartbeat up nothing because it doesn't mean nothing to him so that's that's what I that's what I'm that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at if you know what I mean Mark so I, I you know like but Mark's a ledge Mark Wogan is God he you know he's a he's a legitimate trader he's been doing it for years he's just trying to point out to me that he uses some analysis of somebody else and obviously it helps him out in a way um, that he appreciates but f for me I, I I can't recommend anybody unless they are doing it live in front of me entries exits execution is where it's at peeps I fucking sorry for swearing I messed my ex execution up yesterday there's the honest or the honesty of it yeah I come out of 18 pound 66 on a 3k account it was ridiculous so I've sat here all day you know stressed out anxious and made, and made that much money on this account it's not acceptable totally shit but I could sit here like a lead saying to everybody yesterday like oh you know Hi guys, remember when I when I said to you yesterday that this market after US Open was going to go down? Well, it did. Look, I'm in here and I'm holding all the way down to here. That's another blue tick for me because my call was correct. That is, you know, like it's unprovable bullshit really when people do it. And I'm not saying that I'm not saying that Mark or any anything like this happened, but this is what I see on Twitter all the time and these guys that put plans out, put calls out. It means nothing. Like, what is your account showing? What are you up? Where was your stop? Where was your entry? Where did you get out? How did you manage the trade? That means everything, like, to me. And I never see it. I never, ever see it. People are scared of it for, you know, whatever reason. That they probably don't want to lose subscribers over it because everybody knows that the execution side of it is the hardest bit of trading. It really is. It's tough. So... There you go. That's my that's my two pennies. If somebody wants to get in touch with me and send me entries, exits, and stops, and plans, and calls, I will look at it and I will, I will like I've said, bring it on. Let's do it. Send them me over. And if if you're a legend, you can do it live. I will send everybody. I will I will tweet it out ten times a day that you're doing it. I will follow you myself. I'll subscribe <laughs> because why wouldn't you if somebody's making money? You know, that's the easy thing, isn't it? Like, if someone proves to you that they're making money every day, every month, like, why, why the hell wouldn't you? You know, but that person would probably be in a prop firm. That person would probably be managing big money if they could do it. This is where, this is what I'm getting. You know, like, for me, if I can do it live in front of a YouTube audience and I can do it for a prop firm, I can, some, someone somewhere hopefully is going to trust me with a decent clip size. And that's the next step for me, as I've said. I'm not doing this to try and... Um, you know sell something I'm doing it to just try and create a bit of a, a community but then in the next step hopefully 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 if it all works out um, you know I can um, I can I can take the next step which is what I'm after and these these guys don't accept broker statements by the way these guys that are gonna give you a clip size they want live stuff they do so if that's what they're looking for and why is everybody else not willing to accept that? Who's willing to pay people money for calls and stuff and analysis? Analysis is the easiest thing ever. It really is. You know that's why that's why analysts in 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 big firms don't get paid as much as the people who are putting the actual trades on. Analysts are ten a penny. I'm not trying to be a dick or anything like that, but there's loads of them. Loads of them. How many head traders is the people that actually put the risk on who were, who were making the trading decisions in any firm? Not many, not many, and they get they get paid the big bucks for the reason that analysts just come up with ideas. There's loads of them every day. You get given a big folder of ideas. Right, this looks, this looks, this looks. It's the trader at the end of the day that makes the money. Why? Because the execution is the key. That's why.
in my opinion. Yeah, so I'm on a rant there, but I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, like dick or anything because I'm not. But it just, I just, it just upsets me. I just wish that more people would commit to, you know, doing it live, entry exits, even if they lose. And I'm not saying I'm going to win on this account, right? Even if I lose this account, it will mean something. Somebody, you know, if if this even means that other people can say to their guru, right? I've been paying you for six months now. All you've been giving me is these calls. I've never had an entry, an exit, or a stop off yet. Now, I'm unsubscribing unless you start doing it. What would be wrong with that? Should that happen anyway? I think it probably should. Well, you know, like if somebody's, if, if you're paying somebody for that, for that, what, what, what would, why, why would they not do that? Like, why should you not ask that? So, just, just my opinion though. It's more about the analysis, yeah. Mark, and if you're getting something out of that, brilliant. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to say. Um, and I've mentioned no names or anything, so I'm not going to go into who it is. But for me, I just need more than analysis. I need to know if somebody's trading one, trading it live themselves. Two, if they're able to actually execute any of the stuff that they're spouting out. And three, is the analysis like you know pinpoint to stop entries? Because if it's not, you know like. Who knows what you would have done if that trade hit that level? Who knows? It's so tough. Yes, Mark, how come you didn't get long when it took the low? Trader hedged. Which low, buddy? What are we talking about? How far back do you test back how far back do you back test? Right, change. So there's a fantastic platform called Sierra. Um, I think you can you can buy a monthly subscription to it for about 35 quid. It gives you historical data and you can literally go back for years and years and years on most time frames. It's brilliant. It has all different indicators on it. It's it's really good. So I'd recommend Sierra. That's something that I can recommend because I've got apps, you know, I've got good use out of it myself. So if you're looking at doing any back testing or any type of um, historical data looking back, get yourself Sierra, subscribe for a month. I think you get a month for free as well, by the way. So I'd recommend that definitely. It's very, very good. Sierra is. I think it's the best. It takes a little bit of time to get your head around um, to actually, you know, the inputs and outputs of it. There's that much there that it's very, very difficult because once you jump on it, um, you don't know whether you're coming or going because it's not, it's not the easiest of software or platforms to use. But there's loads of YouTube videos that show you how to use it. So I, I just, uh, I just looked at all of that on Sierra. It was very good. Right, so I think there potentially is a trade setting up here for me. I might have to just jump on this. I'm buying the highs like a mug though, but it is what it is. If we push through that high there, I'm gonna put my stop beneath this point here and try and buy it. It's gonna be like one pound <clears> ten. <throat> If we close above that pin there, I'm gonna buy this. <laughs> and just give it a punt. I see. <clears throat> right, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna move my stop just below that low. And I'm gonna see what happens. <clears throat> it is part of it. So we're in another live trade there, guys. Let's see what happens. You know where my stop is. Hopefully I don't get stopped out, but if I do, it's no problem. It's just one losing trade, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, so you brought the pullback, did you? Yeah, so you got a far better, far better um, entry than me. Let's see, Philios, let's see what happens. Watch it puke now. Yeah, well, that's part of it. It probably will. <laughs> to be fair, mate, um, Aiden, I'm up for this month quite significantly on my normal account. I'm, I had a three... I, w I lost in August, but then I had a 3% winning week at the 1st of September. And then with last week, I, I'm, I'm not too bad. Like, so... In, 
in the run of probability, I am probably going to have a bad run over the next week or two. Like, it will be that because obviously I'm looking back at my average month and September so far has been a good month for me. So there is going to be a point where I have a few, you know, like I always have losing trades on the run. I, I always do, four, five, six losers. So I'm prepared for that. That could happen this week. I might lose this trade. I could lose one tomorrow and Thursday, but I'm fully prepared for that. It is what it is. And if that happens, so be it. What can I do? <laughs> the guy that taught me used limit order, so I know he was legit, but if he was looking for price action, he would update the chat and run us through the price action if he was entering or not. Yeah, you see, that's okay. That's good. As long as he's willing to do that live, I would suggest that that's good. Sierra is the best platform I've used. Yeah, it is, Shine. Very, very good. The annual package is cheap as hell compared to most providers too. Yeah, it is. It's a good one. It's a good one, Sierra. Now, I'm looking at this now. Obviously, the daily ATR, we've probably already smashed through that. And I'm thinking to myself, I'll have I brought the high here? Maybe. Maybe I have. But I don't know. I don't know. Who the hell knows? This thing could just carry on. Now, what could happen is it could just go down all like this throughout the afternoon. Maybe not stop me out. And then as we go into the US session, we could just go straight back up. I don't know. But that trade um, is part of my strategy, so I have to take it. Try and not let any bias creep in. So that's it. But yeah, it looks like I've ticked the high, maybe. <laughs> A nice free offer this month. I'm still break even after giving back two or last week. Yeah, so that's it, isn't it? That's the swings and uh, you know, like that's that's what trading's about, really. I've had a good year this year, though. I'm not gonna lie. I I, I am up, um, you know, significantly. I'm not talking like thousands of percent or anything like that, but I'm up. I've had a good year. So and heading into October, November, December, which are normally the most volatile months of the year, I'm hopefully that I'm gonna have a you know, really try and push it going into Christmas. But who knows, that might not happen. I might just take loads of, you know, like it could be a losing month. I'm not, I don't set my mind on anything. Just have to take what happens. Now, as you can see, you know, like this, this here, this pullback here would have been, a, would have been a way better entry for me. But my strategy isn't to buy this pullback. My strategy is to obviously buy the breakout. Now the breakout looks like a V and normally, I would get a very shallower breakout here and it would create some market structure here like this, like this, and then a high that gets broke here, I would take that high, but this looks like a V and it means that I've had to, lit I had to literally top tick the high. So it is what it is. Let's just see what happens. This is what I'm saying to you about um, try and not be too perfect. Try not to be too perfect if I can. Because on an up day, if you're buying the highs or the lows, as long as your stops are acceptable, you're going to make money if you're long, more times than not. And on a down day, if you sell the market and your stops correct and the market goes down, you know you're going to make more. You're going to make money more times than you don't. So, you know sometimes it's not about trying to be technically perfect. It's just about putting yourself in the position to make money. It's like um, What's the quote now about sitting in the barber shop? If you sit in the barber shop long enough, you'll get a haircut. So it's just about putting yourself in in these situations. On an up day, if you're long, stops correct, risks correct, you know, hold, you can make money. And on a down day, if you're willing to hold, and your stops correct, your risks correct, you you will make money as long as you can hold. That's what it's about for me. So. <clears throat> can you look at the footsie see so, yeah, let's have a look at the footsie then dude what do you want me to look at let's add it to the workspace it's an update update for me there's your 8 o'clock high obviously we've, we've had a leg out and then we've had a, a sort of attempt to retake the IB and it's failed. So for me, that's a bullish day on a foot. See, look at that failure there. See how, we, see how we've gone out and then we've come back and we've closed in the IB and then straight away we've not accepted it. Like that's a nice long there. 
potentially for me. So, does that make sense to you? But I would only trade long the FTSE today. And be, you know, my stop would be beneath here, this low. Because if we get back beneath that low from a market structure perspective, along with the initial balance theory, you know, if we take that low out there, you know, potentially we could go and test the low, lower side of the balance out, couldn't we? So that's just how I look at things, really. Just dead simple market structure and try and tie that in with the initial balance theory to be if we're above, we're looking at long, and if we're below, we're looking at short. Does that make sense to you? What's the heart rate sitting at, Trader Z? It's good. You know what? I feel okay this today. I feel all right. I feel okay. I did, it wasn't yesterday was tough. I think I think with um, the morning that I had, and then missing this trade short, it sort of just uh, it sort of unsettled me a little bit. But I'm okay. I'm willing to accept that this trade could be a loser, um, you know. And I'm not I'm not chasing. I feel in control. Yesterday I just didn't feel slightly in control with everything that happened with the stream. I was trying to sort that out, and then I felt like it was messing me around. It kept on going down. It went down twice. Um, and then I missed the trade short. So there's all these things that were triggering me. Now, I don't mind. If this stops me out and I lose 60 quid, then it's done, isn't it? It's a loser, but um, I just feel more in control today. So maybe it's got something to do with the, uh, you know, it was Monday morning, wasn't it, yesterday as well. And I thought I had everything sorted out and I didn't. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. This thing could literally go back down and, and stop me out, obviously. I would look at taking another entry though, um, potentially. As I've said before, sometimes my first entries are, are sometimes at the highs. And then what tends to happen is it comes back in, coils back down, I'll get stopped out. And then as we get into the US session, we might make some structure like I've told you. We'll have a spike up and then a rotation back down. And as we break that spike high that we've made and push back up, I would take it, take it long again, definitely. But I'll keep you all updated. So I'm I'm gonna get off now, guys. Anyway, so you know where I'm in at. It's been it's been good talking to everybody though. So have a look through, right? This is something that we can discuss tomorrow. Let's have a look through. Let's um, rate my guru, right? That's the slogan for it. If you've got a guru that's giving you entries, exits, and stops, have a look. Have a look today. I encourage everybody to do that. Is your guru giving you an entry, an exit, and a stop? Has a guru published, published any um, broker statements or any type of um, stuff that will prove to you that they actually trade properly, profitably? Or is it MT4 scam stuff? Let's have a go. Let's go through it tomorrow morning. Rate my guru. So that's a that's a little task for everybody today. If you sat there on the computer and you've got nothing to do, you're a little bit bored, or if you've You've been in a room. Have a look around. Let's have a look around the landscape of what, what's out there. Rate my guru. So yeah, tune in tomorrow for that. How would you calculate the initial balance? 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. UK, UK time, Nick. Trader Dante. Hello, Tom. How are you doing, pal? Tom's in the room. Mark, the problem in this game is talk always trumps. You have steamed stream for two weeks and made 7%. It's a good return, and I would be the first to say your transparency is commendable. Tom on the shill. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. I appreciate that. What time do you start? Me? I, I'm always on at 8, 8 a.m. On the live stream at 8.45, Nick. But I'm always watching the markets from 8 a.m. Yeah, that's the thing, Tom. Yeah, I agree with you, dude. But hopefully we can we can clean this industry up, hopefully. That's that's what I want to do. Hopefully we can clean it up. And um, people can see that there is people out there who are willing to, um, you know, give them either some free education or give them some, um, you know, backed up trading um, sort of statements and stuff like that. Now I, I can I can vouch for Tom personally, and I mean that, and I'm not just saying that I can actually vouch for Tom to be profitable, and um, that's not coming from what Tom's told me. I know people um, who are pretty high up in uh, certain places in London that I've spoken to personally, 
when Tom's not been there, who've told me that Tom made money in prop. 100%. So I'm not trying to shill him or anything like that, but I can actually personally vouch for somebody that was with Tom in the prop when they were trading together who can vouch that he did make money. He did make money. So, and I'm not lying, 100% true that is, and I'll stand by that. I can't give you the guy's details, obviously, because um, I don't think he'd be very happy with that, but that is 100% true. No word of a lie. The problem in this industry is people don't want to see profitable trading, they want to see the improbable, they want to see the rags to riches. I don't, I agree with you, Tom, and I think, I think, I think the bulk of people do. And I think that's what happens when you first get into trading. That's what people want to see. But once they've been around the block a bit and they've seen that that doesn't sort of work and it never seems to work for them in their reality when they've tried it, um, you know, and you, they just end up with losses. I think, I think that what, what people who, who have been in the market for more than a year or two are looking for is just somebody that they can rely on, somebody that they can trust who's going to be honest about winning and losing. And, um, you know, they're there with them, not holding the hand, but, you know, they're experiencing the roller coaster, which is what we call trading. And, um, you know, how, helping them through, giving them a shoulder to cry on. You know, it's not a shoulder to cry on. It sounds a bit camp, that does. But just, just like having somebody that you can bounce off who you, who you know is in the trenches with you. It's like being in World War One in the trenches, isn't it? Like, you know, you, you've got your guys who you know. Who you can rely on like they're doing the same as you they they're feeling the shit that you're feeling so you're not on your own and for me that's 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 that was what i was looking for somebody that i could just like you know ring up and say or speak to on twitter and say fucking hell mate i've had a shit day there's a guy that contacted me yesterday who said he'd lost on pound us dollar cable and he sent me a message saying he'd lost 340 quid and um you know i got back to him and i said like you know, was it part of your strategy? How did you feel? You know, and just having that interaction. Now, I don't know if it made any positive sort of um, thing with him, but I, d I did get back to him. I did touch out to him. You know, like that. that is part of trading and just having, maybe just having that someone you can fire a tweet at or you feel comfortable to say, you know, like, shit, I've just, I've just done this or, or whatever too. It just, it just, a problem shared is a problem halved, in my opinion, but you've just got to, got to feel like the problems that you're sharing with that person like that person is legit and he's he's doing it with you and he's in the trenches with you the issue is the reality is never as good as the dream that is the bottom line yep but this is the reality tom isn't it i'm sat here like this you know seven pound up on the dax <laughs> that's the reality of it so i've been here um, sitting in front of this computer since eight o'clock. No, I'm five pound up on the DAX. Five pound eighty. Five pound twenty eight. I could have done an hour in Tesco and made more, right? The re that's the reality. So hopefully, you know, this is. I hope that this does go viral on YouTube, so people can see the reality that you know this is what this is what it's at. Tom made me profitable, hands down, best guru. Yeah, Tom. Tom stuff's good. It is. There is some other guys out there whose stuff's good as well. Like, I'm not going to say that, like, you know, there's, there is some guys out there that can add value to you. All's, all's I'm saying, and I'm not trying to, you know, be negative or call anybody out, is just, I, for me personally, I wanted exits and entries. That's it. So, you might feel different about that. Like, Mark Wogan, who was on earlier, does feel different about that, doesn't he? Like, he, he appreciates the analysis that somebody's giving him, right? And if he's doing well out of that, brilliant and fantastic. And that's amazing that you're getting that value out of it, Mark. And that's that's fantastic. I'm not trying to pull that um, that service down. If you, everybody gets out of stuff what they want, now if Mark's getting positive stuff out of that, brilliant. And if he's willing to pay for it, brilliant. And he's an experienced trader, and obviously he's he, he can cut through bullshit probably just as much as I can. So it must it must be okay for him. But uh, Mark's an experienced guy. He obviously can handle his entries, exits, stops, and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, he's been around the block, you know, probably longer than me. But for me, I'm talking about, like, when I was losing, you know, like, when I couldn't get my edge together, when I just kept felt like everything I touched I was losing money on. And then I'd come on Twitter and see people who weren't, you know, like, would say, like, oh, I've got the service, I'm doing this. And then, like, I would jump on the service and, like, 
I would never make any money. And he'd be like, oh, at the end of the day, like they'd, they'd still have a winning day. And he's like, oh yeah, the, the, trigger, the trigger wasn't just right. Well, how come I wasn't notified of that in live time? How come you didn't give me an exit and a stop and an entry? You know, like they seem to always win and I used to seem to always lose or not never do as well. So that, that's what I'm getting at. Dolce as decorum. Mark, you've lost me there, dude. I'm not intelligent enough to read that. Is that Latin or Italian? <laughs> Get this man viral. Yeah, well, I might be viral if I do my arse. That's about it. But just sitting here slugging the DAX for £6.38 isn't going to send me viral, is it? Let's face it. <clears throat> £4.73. Brilliant. Living the dream. What the hell did I take this career up for? Tell me. £2.50. Here we go. Negative territory is approaching. <laughs> There's bollock stuff everywhere. Just got to know what's decent and what's not. Yeah, Mark, that's the thing, right? You can cut through that bullshit because you're a, you're a veteran. You've been around. You've been around, haven't you? The, I, I'm, I'm talking about the people who were like one or two years into this journey and they're, they've been in crypto and they've been shield referral link after referral link. They've watched... You know, everybody time trying to take money off them for signals, for services, for this, for that. You know, like, you know, what can you do? Like, I'm just trying to help them guys out. And I know that you're an experienced veteran and you can cut through the bullshit. Similar to Tom. Tom can too. And I can now. But there's loads of people out there who can't and we're struggling. And I'm just hoping that, you know, if one person watches these videos and changes their mind about giving a, a guru money, then that will that will be a positive for me. I know, mate, Aiden. It does look like that, doesn't it? But who knows? This thing could just um, this thing could just pull back into this point and then go up. Um, I'm expecting a bullish day because we're above balance, so I have to hold it because um, you know, yeah, we could come back down and stop me out, but we could just come all the way down here, yes, like we did yesterday, right? Yesterday I was positive that I would get stopped out, positive. Like I was four ticks away from getting stopped out and then it didn't quite stop me out and it went straight back up and I was all of a sudden I was in profit. I think at one point I was like 40 ticks up or 50 ticks up on that trade and I was like four ticks away from uh, you know, basically taking a loser. So I'm just going to hold and see what happens. I think you'll make more charging for trader education. Yes, on them. I agree with you. This is what they do. The people that sort of... Um, and I'm not saying that trader education shouldn't shouldn't come with a fee because nobody's going to sit there, are they, and, and do courses and do videos and everything like that for nothing. Nobody is. I'd be, I'd be very surprised if they did it for free. Why would they? Especially if they've got a big following. My point is that the people that are doing it have never proved themselves. And I think they should. I think that's what you should be looking at. So that's that's what I mean by it. So I'm not saying that trader education um, shouldn't be a thing. Yesterday I said to you, if Nav, that flash crash trader, ever did trader education, I would pay 20 grand for a day with him. I'm, I'm positive I was. If he said to me, like, come and sit on the desk, watch me trade ES or, you know, the Dow, it's 10 grand fee for the day. I would seriously, seriously, seriously consider it. Seriously. You've got to. The guy's proven himself to be one of the biggest traders in London. Now, he could command a fee like that. Why? Because he's done it live. He's traded big money. He didn't trade in a three grand account like me. He's doing it with millions of pounds. Now, I would pay for that. You know, now if somebody can do that and charge for it and is willing to step up, um, brilliant, fantastic. I will subscribe. I will subscribe. Took three hard, Dan. Good. Well done. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to bag some points. So you've got to have three heads, haven't you? You've got to have your trader head, your business manager head, and your an analyst head. So let your business manager has made the decision there to take that three. Oh, it's not a bad point. Can I say something about Nav? We've all tried to pick his brains, but he couldn't explain a thing. There you go. So you're saying my 10K would be wasted, are you, Tom? <laughs> Let's go spearmint rhino with it instead, then. <laughs> Isn't Nav banned from trading? I think he is, but it, it wouldn't. He could sit there on a computer, couldn't he? That might be a good gig for him, to be fair. Trader education. I imagine he'd get people, there'd be people, thousands of people queuing up for it. And then he could charge whatever he wanted, really. <clears throat> Even if he just pretended he knew what he was talking about. 
he would sit there and stab a finger at the chart and say, this looks beautiful. We'd all be like, why? And he wouldn't, he would just say it does. Yeah. So maybe he, he just had feel. Tom, fuck it. Let's go spearmint rhino of that 10k. Maybe I should do that with this 3k, to be honest with you. Looking at this current trade, 21 pound down. <laughs> Nav would just close your trade for you. Have you traded with Nav, Nick? Are you part of that? Let me know. Or is that just something that you've read or heard? Double down and triple down. Let me know, Nick. Have you read Flash Crash? Or is it is it like knowledge that you've got from when you've sat next to him? <coughs> What are the odds of me getting stopped here now? <laughs> High. 31's right, we'll see, we'll see. Who knows? We do look stretched though. But as I said to you, right, if this if this stops me out here beneath this low and comes back down and clips into balance and, and goes like this, into balance, we go up, we churn up, we rotate back down. If into the American session we break out and make a new structure high here, I will be long again. Especially um, if it's like in between 12 and 2.30. So I would have another shot at it. <clears throat> Just what I've heard. Right, okay, yeah. <clears throat> Here we go. So this could be my first live stop out, which is always interesting. Turn around Tuesday. Odds are high if you get in a great second entry. They, they are, mate, yeah, but I still do get stopped out sometimes on the second entry. There is days where I can take two losers. So. Tom, you should do a little afternoon live call, not to trade an account or tell us if you're up or down, but to just talk to some people so we can ask your thoughts on setups, etc. Got to dash ledges. Tom, what, why, where are you going, Tom? What are you doing? You get on a bike ride. Bacon's, bacon's under the grill, that's what it'll be. That's where Tom, Tom's off to. He's, <laughs> his bacon sandwich is ready. Yeah, Tom should do that. Hopefully, hopefully, um, hopefully he, he is doing as well. I've seen a tweet from him that he's coming out of retirement, so keep your eyes peeled. Have a good day, Tom. Take care. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to jump off now as well, guys, but you know where my stop is. My stomach's rumbling again. Lovely to speak to everybody. What's the heart rate at now? I'm good, Trader Z. Honestly, I'm fine. <laughs> you think it ticks up with every tick down in the trade? Is that going through a bigger losing trade? The heartbeat goes up. I'm even. Get, I might even. It might even attempt going on a run in a minute because I wasn't. I didn't want to go on one yesterday, but I'm. I'm good. It's an acceptable loss, six years. It really is. So. Trader Z, we'll do a live trading day at some point in the future. Mark has set the bar, might as well steam in. Yeah, you should, Tom. Oh, he's got the second vaccine. Tom, why? OMG, how am I going to keep quiet? Good luck, mate. That's, I hope it goes good for you. <clears throat> let, me know how, let me know how you feel when you're done. When it's done. Let me know you're okay. Yeah, so see you guys. I'm off, I'm off for some breakfast now. Hopefully see you all back in. Back in tomorrow. Yeah, I'll set a schedule up for 8.45 again, guys, okay? But good luck for today. Have a fabulous day, and uh, I hope you all make a profit, and we'll report back tomorrow. Have a lovely one. Take care. See you. Have a good day.